Hello and welcome to AutoInform online magazine how-to workshop. My name is Frank Massey and in this issue I'd like to look at turbo control and in particular how to test the functionality of turbo control. Now, first of all, what I've done to make the presentation of this much easier to understand because obviously the turbo on the vehicle is quite inaccessible. I've set up a rig here and this is actually one of the valid test procedures which we recommend. The possibilities of turbo malfunction are quite wide and varying and we're going to cover some of these issues. The first is actual functionality mechanically of the wastegate control. The turbo I've chosen for this particular uh, demonstration is one which is controlled by pressure actuation of the wastegate diaphragm. In other words, the movement of this rod is created by applying pressure to this diaphragm. The actuator will then rotate through around 45 degrees this linkage, this bell crank, which then opens the wastegate. The first question is, is it physically capable of moving the rod? In other words, is the diaphragm okay? And in particular, are the forces required correct for that operation? So what we've done, simple bicycle pump with an accurate gauge. So this is our standard turbo gauge, which we're going to which we used in other features. We want to not just actuate this rod, but measure its functionality. This particular turbo should open at about 0.7 of a bar and be fully opened by somewhere around 1.5 bar. Set a gauge up with a T-piece. All we're going to do now is simply apply pressure. I've set the zero indicator. So I'm particularly watching for the first movement in the rod. So I'm going to very carefully apply pressure. The rod has just started to move. That's the point of start of operation. So at this point, some boost will now be lost because the wastegate um, valve has opened. And the pressure is just around one bar, just over one bar. Now I want to continue through the complete motion and measure when it's fully open, which is probably around there. And we've gone up to two bar. So I'm fairly happy that the movement of the rod is free. There's no rupture damage into the actual diaphragm, operating through its range effectively. So that particular test is one we recommend. That rules out any possibility of control, mechanical control errors. There is, of course, always the possibility that the actual uh, wastegate, I'll just spin this around, the actual wastegate itself could potentially be physically damaged. That's always an issue and of course that would require the removal of the exhaust system to gain access to literally uh, inspect it uh, in the same way we are now. So that's the basic test on the actual turbo. What I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about how the turbo is controlled electronically. Its basic functionality is obviously mechanical but through the software this wastegate mechanism is controlled by allowing the control of pressure to be applied under computer control. And the software looks at what they call request values. Request is a load request made up of a number of inputs from sensors, APP, accelerator pedal position, air mass meter, engine speed, load, and the calculation is then formed as to the correct boost requirement based on that request. The request is obviously a, a driver demand. It then compares that request with specified values. In effect, that's built within the software, the program stored in the PCM. If there is a deviation for any reason, under boost, over boost, or a deviation in any of the information from which it needs to calculate that value, then there'll be a corrected value. So diagnostically, if you're going to use the scan tool uh, approach, and we recommend you also do use the scan tool, um, although we're not doing it in this particular module, we uh, look for the absence of corrected values. You do not want to see correction. Correction means there's a problem. In theory, request specified and actual values should all match. 
and that's the sort of data that you need to look at when you do dynamic testing on the road. To aid that test, and we suggest you do use a scan tool for this, I'd like just to demonstrate how we've connected the pressure gauges on the vehicle, because we always back up a serial measurement with actual gauge, what we call live real world measurement. So I've set up two gauges, in effect, because we have two requirements. We want to know what the actual physical pressure in the charge pressure circuit is. In other words, how much boost are we creating? Well, yes, of course, we can measure that through the pressure sensor, but we don't know whether the pressure sensor is accurate. And it tends to be a voltage change through interpretation, um, through the scan tool. It's sometimes visually more accurate to look at actual gauge pressure. So one of these gauges, this particular gauge, has been connected via a rubber hose and a T-piece to an appropriate access point to the inlet manifold. Now, in the petrol engine, there's lots of opportunity. So we've actually chosen this particular location, which is an unrestricted access into the inlet manifold, so it's part of the charge pressure circuit. And we can now measure physical boost created by the turbo. We can also zero the gauge so that when we actually drive the vehicle, we can observe maximum boost with the telltale. That's that gauge. And of course, that's on a two and a half, three meter um, extension hose that will be inside the car. The second gauge, identical to the first gauge, this gauge is connected to what is referred to in the VAG group vehicles as the N70, N75 control solenoid. This solenoid is controlled by the PCM by varying the duty, the on time of the device. And by varying the duty or the opening cycle of that valve, it changes the pressure applied to the waste, wastegate diaphragm, what we've just demonstrated. And by varying that pressure, we therefore vary the regulated boost. Well, of course, if the boost is wrong, the first and most obvious question we want to ask and have answered is the correct control pressure being applied. There could be reasons why it is not. It could be a problem with the N75 valve. We can observe the control electronic function, in other words, the duty through the scan tool. So as part of some of those requirements we mentioned about request and specified values, one of those observations we'd call up is a control duty cycle. So we can observe what the computer's trying to do. In other words, if the computer's trying to create and generate boost, but we're lacking physical boost, we want to know, is the duty right? We can do that through a scan tool. And we then want to know, is the control pressure correct also? And with that combination of measurement, we can then very accurately and very quickly and effectively work out whether this is a control problem, i.e. physical control of applied pressure to the wastegate, a PCM problem, a calculation problem, something to do with an input error perhaps from a, a sensor error, or indeed a physical error with the actual turbo in its ability to create positive pressure. And of course there are other tests we can do as a prerequisite before we start to do this. This is all dynamic testing of course, and that's to do uh, a smoke test on the intercooler circuit to make sure that there are no physical leaks also. And that would have been done prior to this setup. This vehicle now is ready to go out on the road with two gauges and the scan tool and observe actual real live measurement of the dynamic control situations. In other words, actually driving the vehicle on the road when all of the sensor values are in the correct operational environment. So that concludes the, the how-to. Um, I hope you found this demonstration useful. It, it, it very quickly is able to provide us with accurate turbo functionality assessment and has been extremely effective at diagnosing these type of faults uh, in the shortest possible time. So thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time.